Alright, how's it going everybody? So in this video today, we're going to look at how to properly export an FBX file from Blender and import it into Unity and get your textures looking as they should. Uh, so, if you're anything like me, you've been working really hard on getting those gains to achieve that sweet, big, dumpy, and you finally got it. Got it all textured, UV unwrapped, all the good stuff, right? Looking looking decent uh actually in fact i think there are some minor er 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 minor errors that we're going to overlook in my model here you can't see them here in blender but a few of my normals are uh not as they should be that's fine we're gonna ignore that um so anyway uh or the the faces just aren't ex uh, like don't exist we're gonna ignore that because that's not important for today so i've already exported it but in case you're not aware, you would just go to export, FBX, you know, name the name the file, pick where you want to export it. I've already got mine there. And then we can go over to Unity, start a new project, or if you've already got a project, whatever. Um, and we can begin from here. So I'm going to quickly go over setting up my file structure. Just uh, good practice. As seats. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's exactly as it should be. nothing better than keeping things nice and organized so i do my assets i do my imports within my imports we're going to want to do one for materials one for models whoops and one more for textures Hopefully you can type and spell better than me. I think I even misspelled that. Nope. Okay. Perfect. Everything's good. So we can start by importing our big sweet dumpy. Let's get that in here now. Wherever you've got it. My, I've got stuff all over the place. Uh, let's bring that in. Let me just correct a few things here. A little bit of the rotation. I don't like that it's facing away from the sun. Uh, why did I do 190? I like it this way so that the sun is going to hit right up uh, right off the front and I can get a better look at the, the front of it. So anyway, as you know, you've probably imported a, a model and seen this. Uh, again, ignore the uh, non-existent faces in there. Um, and that's no good, right? You did so much work getting that thing looking nice. And it doesn't look very nice here. I mean, for a mesh, looking good. But what we want to do is you want to import your textures. Uh, if I can remember what I'm doing here. Okay. So thankfully, this particular model of mine only actually uses one, um, one actual JPEG texture. Or, well, like, you know, uses a few, but only, you know, so, looking for rust mixed on paint. I'm gonna grab all of these, import. Only one portion of the mesh actually uses it, so. And that's, this is a perfect mesh for this. So, then we're gonna go to materials and we're gonna recreate three more materials, naming them the appropriate parts of your mesh. You know, if your mesh does have, like mine, mine is made up of the body, the lid, and the wheels. So we're gonna go ahead and do uh, dumpy body mat and create material. Do one for the lid, dumpy lid mat, and one more for the wheels, which is like really in in my case for this model is it doesn't really matter. I for what I use this uh, dumpster for. The wheels weren't really visible, so I just threw like a gray color on them and I called it good. I put zero detail into them. Um, so anyway, now that we have our model, we have our textures, and we've created these materials, we're going to start with the body, because as I said, that's the one that actually uses a texture. We're going to click the little, excuse you, we'll click this little circle button here next to albedo, and you'll select your texture. I like this one. And if you have the different maps, you can plug those in as well. I'm going to slap the gloss in there. 
Grab my normal map. Looking good. Fix now. Don't know why, but just gonna go along with it. And my reflective, yada yada. And then we can grab that, slide it over, and drop it on there. So, you know, what happens when you import a FBX, uh, or when you export an FBX from Blender, the only thing that's sent out with it is the UV map data. Anything that you do in Blender here over on the uh, materials uh, tab or within the uh, node shader graph here, uh, if you use nodes, none of this actually carries over when exporting and importing over into Unity. Uh, the only thing that it, that it you know, carries out is the, uh, this, you know, your UV map data, which mine looks like crap, but that's okay. Because as I said, this, you know, I used this in a um, uh, still image and as well as an animation, but the animation was still from a single camera perspective where you saw the dumpster from about like yay far away about this angle and you know you couldn't see all the faces so I I said you know it's good you weren't able to see the small areas this is why I didn't put a lot of detail into the wheels you can kind of get around with that I mean hell I could have even deleted the back face entirely no one was ever gonna see it um, but you know I just decided I liked this I like I do love me a big sweet dumpy so <laughs> oh my goodness uh, so I decided <laughs> this would be the perfect model for this um, so I brought, so, uh, you know, I'm bringing this over into Unity, but I, I probably, uh, I don't have any intention on ever using this in the game. Maybe I would, it's just like a random background prop. But anyway, I thought it was perfect for this because the lid material, so part of the down, like, well, one of the additional downsides to how it exports this stuff is, see here in Blender, I created a little noise. Uh, going on in the, in the shader graph for the lid using a color ramp and a noise texture. I created this little bit of a noise, you know, because I thought, you know, it was going to be just enough uh, detail from where the camera was that it would kind of give it this nice old faded look, right? As you can tell, I went with a nice rusty paint look on it. So I wanted it to look old and beat up. Uh, and the finished product looked good under the, you know, proper lighting and everything. Uh, so the problem is, though, when we go back over to Unity, if I take this and I slap it on there, I could even change the color to black and uh, I mean it just doesn't look it just doesn't look as it should. You can drop the smoothness down to rough, get in there, but it doesn't there's no you know, there's no none of that noise. There's none of that faded look. And because I'm you know, I didn't create that effect in Blender using a texture I just used shader, you know, shader nodes. Um, there's no, there's no way that I'm aware of to get that to transfer over, um, and I'm not aware of a way to recreate that here. I'm sure there's a way to do it here in Unity, uh, but I, I'm not aware of it. Uh, and this is obviously not going to apply to everything, but in a specific case like this, just for reference, you know, maybe this helps out. Uh, what I did in this case was I just went over to GIMP because uh, I'm too cheap to pay for uh, Photoshop. Uh, I mean, I probably would pay for it. I just don't know how to use this stuff, as you will see here shortly. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm looking for here. Okay, yeah, so actually we're going to go down to Filters, Render, we'll go to Noise, and uh, see, I'm already messing up. We need to slap in a new, a new image in here, okay? Then we go to Filters, we go down to Render, we go to Noise, and we go to Solid Noise. And then you can just play around with these settings, adjusting the X and Y size. You can uh, get a new seed, uh, you can randomize, you can kind of click through this to randomize the seed, jump, you know, make some big jumps between seeds, yada yada, adjust the detail, that's looking nice. I like a detail of about six, Then we can just kind of you know, mess around with this a little bit more. Pick a seed we like. I think this one looks pretty good. I like to drop the opacity too. Uh, make it nice and then drop it down to about 30. I like that. That that works for me. I don't know. Maybe it should be more. Maybe it should be less. I don't know. That's what I like though. And then we can take that. Export. And I think I have one still somewhere right down here and I'll just export it over that one replace thank you give this a minute to do its thing 
Perfect. Go back into Unity. We'll grab our dumpy lid material. And for some reason, you're not going to see if I were to just apply it here. I'll go ahead and do it right now. Uh, first of all, actually, we need to go over to Textures. You could also create a new folder here if you're a good little worker. You could do a new folder for, whoops, to, you know, kind of build a, a nice little folder structure for your textures, depending on, you know, how many different uh, objects you have. You can do it however you want, but for the sake of this tutorial, we'll just do um, Don't Be Textures. And we'll just take all of these and slap them right in there. And whoops, click on that, and we will go to Import New Assets and find our dumpy lid noise. Bring that in and then go back to materials, get the dumpy lid. All right, so if we select the dumpy lid, it's there and you don't see anything. I don't know why it does that, but you just gotta bring this back up. I like to find a nice little middle ground in there to where you start to see the noise and then you can kind of adjust smoothness. I like it to be rough, so and you can uh, adjust the metallic, you know find how you know whatever ends up looking pretty good I like the look of it though you know for the sake of this it looks good but yeah so basically you as unfortunate as you put in so much work in blender and when you bring things over to unity you just end up having to do all of it again uh, if you did uh, everything if you had this model and you specifically used uh, textures for everything like actual JPEG textures uh, like if I went through the trouble of finding a nice rough plasticky texture to use for the lid here uh, um, then that you know that would be far less work because I wouldn't have to go out of my way to get another program um, like GIMP here and figure out how to work it to create a nice noise texture that I could use to simulate the same little effect. All right, that's going to be a wrap on this one. If anybody has any ideas or suggestions for anything that you've been struggling with, feel free to shoot me a comment. We'll see if we can't figure it out. Before I wrap up, I'd like to point out that the textures I used in this tutorial are compliments of the sweet people over at Polygon. They've got all kinds of textures, hundreds if not thousands, who's counting? Uh, but they got a collection of free ones here you can check out. Uh, they come in resolutions of freaking 1 to 8K, which is absolutely insane. They got all the different maps here, so it's not just the one flat JPEG, which is absolutely awesome. It even has an add-on that plugs into Blender so that you can uh, easily apply the whole bundle and it automatically hooks up with all the different shader nodes. It's absolutely amazing. I'll try to find a link to add to the video. But uh, yeah, it, is, it does have some pricing plans. It is a subscription service starting at 21 US dollars a month to include commercial usage. Definitely check it out though if you can find a way to spare the money. It's absolutely worth it. And uh, co-founder slash CEO of Polygon Blender Guru. I mean, if you're not familiar with who that is, I don't know what the hell you're doing watching my video. Definitely check them out. Far more knowledgeable than me. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be enough out of me. Thanks.